Cause Kura. Hey, welcome everybody. Got me and Theo here right now, uh, waiting on. Hopefully, uh, James Leary will be able to come in pretty soon. He ended up having a phone work phone call, and, and work takes precedence over anything else, especially in today's age. So yeah, you got to make that money. And uh, so we figure we plan on doing it anyway. We had to we had to postpone. So if anything, you've got me and Theo to sit around and talk with and talk to for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We were just actually talking about the uh, the the Valiant Universe stuff with uh, mm -hmm. we start off with Bloodshot and yeah. Uh, but yeah, you were, you were saying something about Turok though. Oh man, Turok would be a great movie because like I haven't seen the uh, so what so tell me what you thought about the Bloodshot movie first off. Uh, also, I'm trying to remember correctly. It's been a long time since I actually picked that stuff up. But wasn't that a DC imprint? No, that was all Valiant. Which so okay, a lot of the earlier ones like uh, let's see, like like Turok and Solar. Mm -hmm. Magnus, those were all old Dell Gold Key books way, mm -hmm. way, way back in the day. Um, and then Valiant came along, and through through those, they ended up doing their picking up, making a few new ones. I said like um, like Bloodshot and Ninjak and mm -hmm. uh, Rye and Harbingers, a few other ones. And then I want to say somebody it, it became Valiant Entertainment for a while, and. It was weird. Some of the characters got sold off. Some of the characters stayed with them. It's, it's honestly right now I couldn't tell you who owns the rights to to what right now. And that's probably why it's such a, a hard. They're having such a hard time. Well, I'm imagining they're having a hard time making the movies because, like Bloodshot. First off, I would have put Turok out around the time the third or fourth uh, Jurassic Park movie <laughs> came out. Yeah, <laughs> or or when they remade Conan the Barbarian. Oh, with Jason Momoa, yeah, that yeah, around then too, because they would have won that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so who would who would you want to put in place for 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 the actor for Tura? Well, besides you, of course. You know, I wouldn't do Tura. I wouldn't. I wouldn't try to do Tura. It's too much. Uh, it's too much consistent nudity. Like you got to be in shape <laughs> all along. Like you got to already be in shape for that one to work. Um, <laughs> God, so. Well, here's the problem. First, I'm going to start with who I think they would use. I think they would use The Rock, and I think that's a mistake. Okay. Because um, Tuak is sinewy. He's, he's, you know, he's, he's not much to him. Like, the whole thing is, is like, how, you know, feral he is, and not how big and strong. Right. Uh, that, that's some Conan shit. But, like, uh, if I had to cast Turok, you know it sucks? <laughs> that we didn't have this 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 technology 20 years ago because a young Kevin Sorbo would be an interesting tour out. Oh, yeah. And, and honestly, he could probably still pull it off now. I mean, of course, he, he'd have to be a little, I mean, that'd be an older tour out. But yeah, I, I agree with you. Young Kevin Old Sorbo. Old man tour out. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, there you go. But yeah, I mean, around, around his Hercules days, what he yeah. was doing, that would have been freaking awesome. Yeah, actually, I, I have to agree with you because he, you know, he always likes that long hair and all the other crap. So, yeah. Um, I am such a Jason Momoa hater. <laughs> Why? Jealousy. Oh, <laughs> pure jealousy. It's pure jealousy. He's a he's a like he's making his way up as far as acting goes. He's really like put in the time and effort and like done the work. You know, I, I met him on conventions and stuff, and he's a really nice guy. Even with his line, like nobody was in his line before he blew up. You know, just sitting there hanging out, being nice to people. Nice fellow. Seen him out in the street. Nice dude. Mm -hmm. Hater. <laughs> Hater. Yeah, we actually, I remember first seeing him. Uh, I used to love the Stargate series and the Stargate Atlantis. He was on that one. And, mm -hmm. and that's, I think it's one of the first things I ever saw him in. Of course, I know, I mean, I learned later on he was in Baywatch and all this other crap. But, you know, he wasn't the J Jason Momoa we know now with the beard and the dreads and everything else with until he, he, he was that character on stargate yeah yeah i mean and why wouldn't you you know like if, if, if i could get away with that i'd do it <laughs> you know? I, I, I admit, I, I, i'm kind of jealous too i don't I won't say i hate him but i'm kind of jealous too because i mean the man gets to go around throwing spears throwing axes drinking beer 
having a good time, throwing water in Jimmy Fallon's face, whatever the hell's going on. He can just, he, he's, and like you said, overall, I've met him a few times, just in a, a decent human being, a very yeah, nice. Yeah, just a nice guy. I mean, and I, I, I want to be clear. I don't hate him. I'm just a <laughs> hater. I'm just a hate. Like, real life, in real life circumstances, that goes away, you know, whatever. Uh, I'll, uh, you know what really did it, though? He married Lisa Bonet. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> blame the man. You know, when he saw her, he said, I'm going to marry that woman. And sure as shit, he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's something about that declaration. Because I, I actually said that to myself about my wife now on our first date. <laughs> yeah. I, I've said that about a few people, but it was the other way. Like, uh-uh, I ain't no way I'm marrying that one. I've said that a lot. I've said <laughs> that a whole lot. Mm-hmm. But uh, but see that's who that's what's going to be who my pick for you know, like I said for for Turok who actually I think and he is muscular but he's not like like way overbuilt muscular yeah he can he can slim down my thing is the tattoo oh, that's easy to cover though they wouldn't you know it's like oh, they why they, I don't think so it, it just I, the Rock is my example you know he got his tattoo it's like oh just work around it and they did and it, and it works fine but like uh, I don't know there's something about just that image of just a bear like there were no tribal tattoos for right Turok, you know um this is for me it's about suspending reality right. um and so but i i do that was why it was hard for me to not say him, uh jason momoa well uh, like i said we're, we're talking earlier too uh, the the shadow man series you know that, a lot of that's set in new orleans and everything else it deals with voodoo and 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 magic and everything else and shoot i, I would honestly especially with everybody loving today's supernatural type stuff i think that would be phenomenal they're having it's having a moment eco weiss i don't know if i'm saying that right uh let's see is there a way have you seen the raid the ray the raid <laughs> Oh, right. No. How do you spell it? Inko what? Uh, his name is, his first name is I-K-O. Last name is U-W-A-I-S. But you got to see him in action. Like he's a, he's a martial arts star and he's just like, he's got that regular build, just like a regular dude, but he does some amazing, like I could see him like jumping off a dinosaur and do like what, you know, I could see him actually doing that stuff. Let's see. I mean, <laughs> He's a Tony Ja kind of guy. Yeah, he's definitely very slim, slender. And let me see if I can pull it up on here. Let me, let me upload one here. And I don't think you'd have to account much for the for the accent either, because Stuart didn't talk much, did he? Um, not to begin with, but he—I mean, he's basically like a a, I mean, like a Tarzan type character. He just yeah, dinosaurs. There we go. That guy. Yeah. Yeah, I could see him doing it. Long hair. Remember, uh, are you into Tony Ja? Yes. Remember when Tony Ja made uh, Umbach 2 and 3 when he had like the long hair and he's in the jungle? Mm -hmm. Like that kind of deal. Because he's a little bit bigger than Tony Ja. Now that you're, thinking, now that you're saying that, Ben, back in the day 20 years ago, I'd almost want to see Jackie Chan in there. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Have you seen... Uh, what's the name of that movie he just did a couple years ago? Oh, The Foreigner. Have you seen The Foreigner? No, I haven't seen that one Ooh, yet. Ooh, it's old Jackie. It's old man Jackie Chan. <laughs> but, but like he still he still got it. Like he, he didn't got a whole lot of it, but he right. still got it. He gets like he's still for a 67 year old dude. He shouldn't be jumping off of roofs like he did. Right. And Not it's that. amazing. I got turned on to him. God, I, I think back in the nineties, early mid nineties. Mm -hmm. And I went back and I found, of course, just tell you, look, I went back and found every VHS copy of anything I could find of his. Yeah, that's part of. I ended up ordering online like a box set of all these VHS pirated VHS copies of stuff, and uh, that's where I got to see Drunken Master and. Oh yeah, uh, dude, this just I mean, you don't get any better than that. I don't think we'll ever have another action star to his level or quality ever again because yeah. Now he's, Everybody's worried about hurting their coat. They have to have a stunt man or a fill in, everything else. Everybody's worried about hurting the, the stars. And Jackie Chan was like, Psh, screw it, I'm doing it. Well, there's a couple like Tony Ja and, and uh, this other guy, Iwo, he, he Iwo, Iko Uwai. I got to get that right. But yeah, they both do their own stunts. Like Tony Ja, you can see him running on the top of people's heads in a crowd. Like he's really doing all that. 
The thing, though, about Jackie Chan that I feel made him exceptional is that he was a really good actor. Right, right. He came out of the game. He was funny. You know, he was he was not just a good. He was funny. So well, like, yeah, he took it. A, he took the the traditional you know samurai movies mm-hmm. and made turned them into comedies and and it was still some serious storylines, but you laughed along with it. So that was something that not a lot of people had done before. Yeah, and I think that's important too because like you can't have a super serious story a hundred percent of the time. You got to have some kind of levity. Well, it's like there's one uh, Tarantino did one. If you haven't seen it yet. If you like the early Jackie Chan stuff, you'd actually like it. It was called um, Sukiyaki Western, Western Django. Django. Yeah. I love that stupid movie. I found it, and just by sheer chance, they had it on one of the back when Best Buys and crap like that used to be around. Or not Best mm-hmm. Buys, uh, uh, Blockbusters. Yeah. And they had it on their, on their for sale bin for like $3. I'm like, all right, I've seen everything else. Let's give this a try. I fell in love with that movie just completely. De- I think it's hilarious that the entire movie is in English. Mm-hmm. But the only actor who actually speaks English in the movie is the 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 main guy, the the the, the star of the thing. Mm-hmm. Everybody else is phonetically sounding out their the, the English. So like you've got with a one, cowboy accent. Yes. So they got, they got one guy going, "You Lily Liva." I mean, it was just yeah. it was perfect. I just loved it. And to, uh, fun fact, that's actually not a Quentin Tarantino movie. He just produced right, it. Like right. he, he basically just brought it to America. Yeah, he put yeah. his own. He put the little, uh, the little scenes in there whenever he did it. Yeah, it was him and somebody else around those little scenes for it, like little mm-hmm. film scenes. So, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you're right. Yeah, it was one of those Tarantino presents type things. I love that too, though, because I think he's got a great. I think he has a great sense of taste as far as movies go. Um, like for however problematic people might think he is, he's got great taste. Oh yeah, you know. Well, I, I'll be honest with you. I'm one of those weird ones that there's movies that ever, especially in the comic book world, especially there's movies and TV shows that everybody else just raves about and loves, and I think they're abominations. I can't stand them. Like you'll probably you'll probably agree with everybody else, not with me, but like the the Christopher Nolan Batman trilogy, mm-hmm. I absolutely think is horrible. I can't stand it. Now why? I, I think what it is is the fact that it's too convoluted and too drawn out. It's like I think the the vision he had was so far from what Batman is as a character, it didn't resonate with me. What uh, about it? Was it the Bruce Wayne aspect or the or the uh, or well, the no, actual I, Batman the, aspect? You know, the Bruce Wayne part actually um, wasn't too bad. It wasn't too far off. And I think that's what that's what bothered me though was there wasn't enough of the Bruce Wayne aspect because so if you read the comics and everything else you kind of there's there's a differentiation between the two so rather than Bruce uh, rather than Batman being Bruce Wayne's alter ego it's actually the other way around Batman is the is the is the person and Bruce that's who he wants to be all the time and mainly is and Bruce Wayne is the the alter ego he has to be in order to be Batman mm-hmm. and. I, and honestly, really true. I, I just couldn't even stand Christian Bale's acting in the, in the thing. And I'm a huge Christian Bale fan. Was it the Batman voice? Did the Batman voice? That was it? horrible. I mean, when you when afterwards there was a guy, uh, Pete Holmes. If you've ever watched any of those, oh, I like Pete Holmes. Uh, he did a parody of the, the Batman trilogy. Yeah, and, his show. His, his show is really good too. Oh yeah, yeah. And honestly, it, it just completely. It, I, I, it blew me away. I, I was like, I'd rather watch those than I would with the original trilogy. Well, because he also makes a lot of sense in it. You know, oh, yeah. things he's saying is like, oh, yeah, why didn't they do that? You know? Well, it's like, you know, in, um, like, there, I guess, like, whenever you have to, like, with this whole Justice League thing now, you know, whenever you have to come out with a, with a director's cut or a Snyder cut or a Nolan cut, you know, why didn't you just do this to begin with? And I'm, I know studios have, have things to, to input into things where you know you don't necessarily get everything you want, but obviously you filmed it, obviously you had it. Why you know if you felt this passionate about it, then the company feels as much about it to where they're going to allow a re-release of it with with your version of it. Why didn't you just do this in the first place, or fight hard enough to do this in the first place? Because they got the money. As far as as far as I understand that process to go, um, like. It's less about artistic vision. It's more about box office draw, right? right. So, like the the like as and this is as far as I understand it. 
um, when you release a movie, they don't care about how good it is. They care about how much it sell. Right. So like the the Nolan version, he probably fought for it, and that's why it ended up in the. That was probably the compromise. Uh, like I said, plus well, like I don't know if you saw the big thing is now is the Snyder cut for the mm-hmm. new Justice League. I was talking about somebody earlier. I said, like, yeah, wouldn't it be funny if they just like, like added a little bit more onto the credits, but it's the same exact movie and just taking everybody's money and then everybody will say, oh, this is great, just because they want to be on the end because the Snyder Cup can be so much better. Do you know when that's coming out? I actually haven't heard about it. Uh, oh, it's been all over the internet. Um, I want to say at the end of the year, I want to say HBO Max is going to be be picking it up and doing it. Uh, HBO Max is getting a lot of the, the DC stuff, which I, I find kind of funny because they really pushed hard for this uh disney or i mean the the dc universe app where you, they've got all this old stuff and new stuff and the the fact that they're taking a lot of this stuff to hbo max and not on the app i i don't i'm not sure how how what the reasoning is before all that well i heard about that because i actually followed uh titans uh when it first came out mm-hmm. oh, uh, yeah. very close that was a great show and uh, i was really ready for swamp thing jason said 21s when it comes out okay cool um, I heard that though that Swamp Thing like threw him over budget or something. Basically, they ran out of money. Well, so the story with the Swamp Thing is, and I I loved the show. I thought it was phenomenal. Yeah, uh, but um, so I forget, I forget where they were filming at. Supposedly, they were going to cut them some huge tax bra- tax breaks and mm-hmm. everything else. And as you all well know, you know that gets put into the budget. That's you know, so if they have, you know, if they're giving them a a, a two hundred thousand dollar per episode tax break. You know, they're, they're saying, okay, what's well, going to cost us a million dollars an episode to do? They're including that $200 tax break. Well, whoever, wherever it was, decided when the time came around, like, no, we're not going to, we're not giving you the tax break. Mm. So basically, that's how they came in over budget because all this money they were, they were relying on for the tax cuts, tax breaks didn't, didn't happen. Mm. So they ended up ending the series. I'm hoping. I mean, it, it, it got some great reviews and some great stuff. So I'm hoping it actually comes back and and maybe on the on the DC Universe app again and where they find a little place to film. I saw an an ad for it, but I don't think I think DC Universe app is done. Um, I think maybe they're trying to recoup and whatever they can and keep it open for for you know uh, to subscribe. But uh, as far as I heard, Swamp Thing not happening. Like kind of tanked everything. Well, suppose, uh, suppose there's even stuff they were talking about bringing, doing a new Constantine show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I heard uh, about that too. Um, but like I said, a lot of this stuff looks like it's going to HBO Max. Over, I mean, I guess the last big thing they put on the Universe app was um, uh, that Harley Quinn cartoon. Mm-hmm. And see, cartoon. See, when I don't know, I guess it's hard because DC is known for the cartoons. Because I was gonna say. That when you're when you're relegated to just putting out cartoons instead of your live action, it's probably a sign that you know things have gone sour. But I mean, Batman the animated series, the, fantastic the, the, cartoon. You know, all, all those one shots are. Doing, I, I, I I'll tell you, I agree with you wholeheartedly. Because I've been saying this for a long time. Is in the cartoon market, DC's got it hands down. Mm-hmm. They have completely dominated over over the the marble market and everything else you know they have i mean they have stuff that's good for kids as well as adults i mean they have completely dominated the storylines everything's just been phenomenal mm-hmm. yeah, well, they, and also i mean even their tv shows their tv shows have really yeah they say all their tv related stuff the cartoons tv shows live action has really has, has been heads and shoulders above some of the other stuff then you look at their movies and right yeah 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 on the other hand marvel their cinematic universe their movie universe has just been spot on i mean yeah yeah, it's it's incredible but yet their cartoons and tv shows are a little lackluster and hard to watch with the exception of a couple into the spider verse i thought was really good oh no no that well i guess it's still a movie though but and that's also sony and and not just these uh not just marvel right Yeah, no, the NC Universe is good. And, and of course, I can't talk bad about, about one of the series that you were in. <laughs> oh, you know what? I actually <laughs> like that show. Cloak and Dagger is what he's talking about. Cloak and Dagger, <laughs> I thought, I thought Cloak and Dagger was clever because, one, they were lesser known. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and so you have a little bit more freedom with the storylines you choose to go with. There, you you still have diehard fans, but you don't have people disputing whether or not what you're saying is absolutely accurate. You know, right. you can build on it a little bit. Plus, they made it more modern. Right. Um, I enjoyed the series. I thought it was actually pretty decent, even before I knew you were you were on it. <laughs> yeah, I I heard about it because I, I saw they were they were filming they filmed in Louisiana. Um, but like uh, when I got to see how they did their effects, I think it's real cool, real cool stuff. Like I feel like that's what's going to make or break a car, uh, comic book adaptation. You know how well you can you can really sell the uh, the effects after the storyline. After you get the storyline down. And you really you're true to the to the actual lore, you know? Can you? Because there's a few things that I've seen. It's just like mm, X Men, for instance. There's a couple of you know instances of of X Men movie that you know you could have waited. <laughs> well, and, and I think that's what sometimes you can overdo it with the special effects too. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, there's a TV show, an old sci-fi show I used to love called Babylon Five. Yeah, and the one thing I used to love, they used to do. It, if you go back and read up on it, what they would do, and actually, uh, the new Battlestar Galactica did the same, basically the same format. He even said he modeled it after Babylon Five. He's admitted n- numerous times, but they would yeah. do, they would do a lot of episodes of nothing more than character building, mm-hmm. and save the extra money from those shows to put towards a, a six episodes from now, a freaking super duper epic CGI battle Royale. So they would have all, they would, they would save money on five episodes. So they, on the sixth episode, they could just go balls to the wall on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think especially when like a new technology comes out, you, you're really eager to like, to use it. Did you see the first blade movie? Oh yeah. I like if you look at that CGI now, like what the fuck were they doing? But back then that was cutting edge. But a giant blood sphere to the ceiling <laughs> just looks ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Well, but, that's like I mean, I'm still partial. And I know it's just nostalgia state, state, but you know, the old claymation, old Ray Harryhausen, you know, movies stuff like that. And it brought it by. I saw somebody posted a little clip the other day about the basically it was like a five minute clip of speed, speed motion of him animating the things as they move along i'm like mm-hmm. dude, that's that that was some serious serious skill not only do you have to do the yeah. sculpt for the stuff but to to know how to pose these things and and you know it didn't look realistic in any way shape or form but as a kid it was freaking awesome yeah and i still go back and look at it now and get a little nostalgic on it that actually reminds me one of my favorite things uh especially when internet was newly available to everybody was uh, they would have these videos of stick figures fighting. Mm-hmm. You know, it was like doing the martial arts stuff and swords and whatever. Um, but because it's a stick figure, you don't have to worry about how realistic the person is. Right. So you can worry about what it's doing. I love that stuff, man. I love. I also love claymation because, like you're saying, you have to use your imagination way more, I think, uh, because it's practical. You, you know, you're not inserting an effect. You have to make the clay do it. Yep. Yeah. Cool. You figure you talk about the earlier days of the internet too. I remember too, long before the days of uh, Robot Chicken, mm-hmm. the, same, the same group group did a uh, thing called. It was basically the same thing called Sweet J Presents. Hmm. They end up revisiting a lot of the skits that they did on there for, for Robot Chicken, and it's mm-hmm. the same group: Seth Green, uh, uh, Breckenmeyer, all these same people that did this. Mm-hmm. And, but the cool thing was so. Be- believe it or not, they actually had to tame a lot of the stuff down from the Sweet J to Robot Chicken. Because yeah, I believe that. It was a webisode on the internet, and then like uh, one of the ones they finally, it took them a while to do, was the uh, the Super Friends Real World episode. Hmm. And yeah. they had done it on the Sweet J Presents you know, years and years before, but it took them a while to bring that one back, because I, I don't know, they had like Catwoman stripping and all kinds of other stuff, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was if you get a chance to go back and look at them is it was some of them there's still a few of the clips i don't think they've ever done on robot chicken that i know of anyway i you know um adult swim has a roku app mm-hmm. and uh they'll have like a marathon so you can just drop in while they're just streaming the entirety of a series and robot chicken's one of them like especially now where time is 
more of a construct than ever. Um, like late at night, I can't sleep. You know, nobody's up. I want to just, I want to try to just tamp that down. I watch. I so Venture Brothers has been my go-to, but Robot Chicken is always that absurdist idea that I that I'm looking for. You know. You know that's one I've never seen yet. I keep telling people, tell me I've never watched Venture Brothers. Everybody's telling me I love it. Yeah. Well, did you, well, did you like Johnny Quest? Oh yeah, yeah. I know the whole premise behind it. I, yeah. I, I really do. It's just I, every time I, I think about it, I'm not in front of a TV or in a position where I, where I can watch it. Then yeah. Like believe it or not, like the what I've been watching lately because of Jason that works for me. Um, uh, you know, I got him to write down the order to how to watch Power Rangers. I was never a Power Rangers fan. It's way I'm I'm it's way after my time. Mm-hmm. But I was like, you know what? I'm gonna give it a shot. You know, he's so crazy. I think I've made it through two episodes in the past week because I have to I, I put it on, I fall asleep. Yeah. And, and you know, then I have to go back and rewatch the episode again and fall asleep again. So I'm watching it like five minutes at a time. Yeah. It's actually not bad, especially because uh that was that was something they did a lot of. They had a lot of shows like that. So, oh, yeah. you know, the, the best one gets the best stuff. I, uh, you know, clearly, but like, I, I, and maybe if I went back and watched it now, it might change my mind a little bit, but I remember it being really good. Well, uh, be careful what you wish for. I remember what was, uh, I remember growing up, The Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai. I mm-hmm. absolutely loved, loved, loved that movie. And, when I finally came, re- got re-released or finally out on DVD, I watched it and I remember going, "Okay, it's it's fun, it's good, but I don't remember. It's not as good as I remembered it being." <laughs> oh my god! Uh, so I was at a yard sale some years ago, uh, and this is back when we still had a DVD player, you know. And uh, I came across a box set of different strokes. Oh, <laughs> wow! <laughs> It's different. It's real okay. different. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> it's different than I remember it being. I can imagine. Yeah, because you know, I probably haven't watched that since it, since the original airings of them either. Yeah, that would be one that would definitely have to go back and and have a whole new context. On. <laughs> like, oh, okay. Because like everybody always points back to that one time when the dude tried to get at deadly. Yeah, there's a whole lot more subtle shit that happened in that show. It's, Head scratches, you know. You know, I, honestly, I think the only the only show I can think of off the top of my head that that actually stood the test and and you know was poignant back in the day and and even though it was a comedy, it, it had a message to it, and it, even now it, it still you know some of the messages from it go into today was uh, the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Hmm. I thought you were going to say cops. I'm playing. Oh yeah. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> So I, I've got to find this one clip from cops. Uh, I laughed. At, we it was late one night after we had all been kind of drinking and having fun, mm-hmm. and turned the TV on. I caught the very end of a cops episode, and pair there was two guys, one big old guy, and one tiny guy, and the sister of the big guy, mm-hmm. and the cops in between them. Well, the big guy reaches over to cop and decks the young, the the smaller guy, because apparently he was the boyfriend of of his sister. Mm-hmm. And knocks him clean out. And then all of a sudden, they, they put the, they like, you can't do that in front of me. They put the cuffs on it. They put two pair of cuffs on it. He's a big old boy. Mm-hmm. And uh, they're loading him into the paddy wagon. And as the credits start to roll, you hear him say, ain't nobody hits my sister. Less than he's married to her. <laughs> Whoa. Did I'm he like, actually say lesson? Lesson, he's married to her. <laughs> Jesus. I mean, it, it. You can't you write. The, you, can't. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> I'm trying to find like I don't even know how I feel about that to say. Because <laughs> well, like, oh, it, it, it was one of those things at first. I'm like, did, did we really hear that? <laughs> <laughs> can't hear my sister. <laughs> he's married to her. Like, Jesus. Well, right, uh, well, it's like I, I I still love going back. Like there's one. Oh my god. I use we we I teach the uh, CPR classes for the fire department. And there's one mm-hmm. video I always use. And it, let me see if I can bring it up. I uh, hold on up. I'll, I'll just talk for a second while I try to bring this up. Cause I'm telling you, I laughed so hard. Hey, quick question. Is yeah. it possible to get uh, your CPR certification online? Uh, n- 
you could get recertified, I believe. Mm. I don't know if you can get certification. Um, uh, let's see. Because I got to uh, I got to renew my personal training certification. I know that's one of the requirements. Um, it, have you already let your, your card expire? I never got it. Oh, <laughs> so. Hmm. Well, I know we teach the classes here um, at the fire department whenever we get we, we get through them a couple times a year. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically all you have to do is just pay for the card. Yeah, I know, I know there's got to be some places over near you that do it. I would check with with uh, the local fire stations because mm -hmm. they've got to teach it and recertify and stuff like that too. So I would check some of the fire stations, find out what they're doing in class. Usually, it's not that bad. Okay, I mean it's probably going to be postponed right now. Right, but, right, yeah, but uh, yeah, I don't, oh I don't think there's a way to do it online because there's a skills portion involved with it. Yeah, yeah. So, have you heard about uh, what's been going on generally in the world? Well, first off, I wanna I wanna talk about one thing that I read um, that I found super super poignant. Uh, people's relation to time when their schedules are shifted or halted. Well, oh. seriously, like there's a there's a psychological phenomenon that occurs that just keeps you from getting it together. And I thought maybe I was cracking up. But um, and they they so it was like it was on this forum and it was a psychologist talking about it. And of course, another one got on. Well, actually, but uh, the debate was whether or not it was purely trauma induced, because like what we're going through is technically trauma. Um, but like I, to whomever might be paying attention right now, you're not crazy. <laughs> you're, you're, you're doing just fine. Just make a schedule, stick to it and you'll feel better. <laughs> well, I'll be honest with you, it's, it's very similar to what happens whenever you do something. Like if you're used to a normal eight to five, everything else job, Monday through Friday, if you like for me, it's something I had to deal with a long time ago. Uh, it is, I think it's called something like shift work syndrome. And this is basically a, a an expanded version of that, a more compounded version of that. Mm -hmm. uh, it does everything from, you know, affect your sleep cycles to not knowing what day it is, not knowing what the date. I mean, the stuff that you normally, like I said, when, when you have a set schedule, these are things that are just kind of ingrained in you mm -hmm. and you don't even think about them. Whereas now you actually have to make a conscious effort to find out, oh, it's two o'clock or find out, oh, today is my anniversary. <laughs> Boy. Uh, <laughs> well, fortunately, I didn't forget my anniversary. I just didn't know what day today was. <laughs> But I'm very thankful that it was that and not the other way around. Right. Um, but yeah, thank you again for for <laughs> that graciousness. I uh, I <laughs> and the thing is, I thought I sent you the message the day we were having the conversation, and I went back to see if you responded, and saw so I just sitting there unsent. Like, oh, well, this is gonna be fun. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. No, that's what I said. I mean, to me, this stuff is fun. This is, uh, yeah, Jason's like, like it's 11 o'clock and I, he has to be here to open the shop. Uh, but, but you know, it's, um, uh, this stuff's all in fun. I mean, honestly, I'd like to see it going somewhere further where we, you mm -hmm. know, but, but especially right now, especially with everybody starting to slowly get back to real life. Uh, it, it's, this is going to be a little more difficult. Bailey, it's going to come to the point where it's basically going to be us doing this most of the time and just occasionally having a guest on, you know, just yeah. going and shooting, shooting the crap and, and kind of let everybody know what's going on. And, and having I kind of disagree with that, though. I kind of think things are going to go back to, like, shut down relatively soon. Well, I mean, yeah, OK, you're, you're right. Because like I said, uh, we talked about this earlier. You know, it's almost like, you know, the Spanish flu when they opened things up too early or things went back to normal too early and came back, you know, twice as bad as before yeah I, I do believe that's probably that's gonna end up happening but uh like i said it's still gonna be i, I still want to continue doing the streaming thing I've, I've loved it we've done the podcast for for years now i like the video format so much better and so much more because you can actually interact I mean, there's two things you can do like i said with with the comments you can interact with fans you can mm -hmm. interact with people they can join in and you know then uh, uh plus you also get to 
see your person face to face. No, I guess in podcasting, you are usually sitting in the same room, but I still like this better. I so said, we could bring it like, if somebody wanted to jump on right now, we could bring them in. They don't have to be anywhere around here. You know, uh, yeah. you know you have somebody chimed in from, from the UK and said, Hey, I've been listening. You know, I got something to add. We could just bring them right into this. And I, I love this whole thing. And I'm hoping it, you know, it ends up going a lot further than, than, than what was intended for. I think it will. Um, I think it will for similar reasons. There are some people who are kind of innovating. The pod- Have you seen Mike Tyson's podcast? I've heard. I haven't seen it yet. No. So it's hot boxing with Tyson. And the it's like you said, in the same room and all that. And when everything broke out, he had this brilliant pivot and it was safe distance with Tyson. And he was doing the same thing. You know, and he, like, but it was a seamless transition. Like, he, I don't think he missed an episode. You right. know what I mean? Um, and and I think that's very uh, telling as far as what the trends are going to be. I think there's going to be a lot more people. Like, people say there's a saturation issue and that everybody's going to have a podcast, but I think more people want to hear about what you got going on if it's interesting. And I, I don't think it's everybody's going to, you, you might have everybody try to, but bottom line is there's, Let's face facts. There's some people that just should not. <laughs> and and uh, it was like a, like a buddy of my mind, you know, Steve Scott, you know, he's got to the point where he he's like, he used to do the podcasting thing a lot. He loved it. He goes, he's a comic book artist. He's like, yeah, but I've got a face for radio. So, you know, <laughs> a lot of, and that's the thing is a lot of people is weird, aren't comfortable being in front of a camera and mm. it very, very quickly. And yeah. For me, I learned a long time ago from uh, from being a instructor at the fire department. Sure, right off the bat, everything I was talking about, I'd get there to give a presentation, and it was um and ah uh, and you know and like all those crutch words. Mm-hmm. Now I could get in front of a, a you know a stadium of twenty thousand people and talk and not be nervous about it at all anymore. That's a, that's definitely a, a a useful skill. Yeah. Uh, I was very fortunate when I was a kid. Uh, the school system that I was in was not great. School was not great, but they put us in Toastmasters. <laughs> and, uh, I, I like one of the best moves they could have made, but like Toastmasters was game changing, man. Just and I wasn't very, I wasn't a very good student. Like I, I'm not a fan of homework. Um, I don't. I get better retention from hearing Mm -hmm. than from reading. And so like going home and reading a bunch of stuff did nothing for me. I mean, not nothing, but I didn't want to do it. You're a tactile. Um, Yeah, for sure. And, but like getting up there, whether I was prepared or not and bullshitting for 10 minutes definitely teaches you a few things. Oh yeah. It it's, it's nerve wracking, but once Mm -hmm. you probably get used to it, it's really not that big of a deal at all. That's when you, you find sometimes it's better than, while you're sitting there, that's what most people do when they're thinking about what they're going to say. They'll be like, uh, um, but sometimes that pause makes it more poignant. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. It's something to be said for stillness. Yeah. Hell, I'd be still all day long if I could. Me too. I would grow right into this, this chair and that's the other thing I'm telling you though, man, it's really messing me up to my sleep cycle. I, like I said, because I've even been out of work, even with, even with the fire department, I was doing work there. But after I hurt my hand, I went, you know, I was out of, was on workman's comp. I wasn't doing anything then. Mm-hmm. And my sleep schedule has been horrendous. I'll be up till, normally I w- I'm good with getting three to four hours sleep a night. And I can actually function on about four hours and function okay. Anywhere between four to six hours, I'm good. Now I find myself, you know, going to sleep at, three o'clock in the morning waking up around seven because you know, I'm used to only getting a few hours, but being so blasted tired and then nothing else to do. I just go back to sleep till about 11 or 12 and I wake up and I feel horrible because I'm, I'm more tired getting those extra hours of sleep than I was before I, I took that nap. Yeah. That's the thing I've been, I thought I was going to be a big napper when this, uh, when this happened, I was going to have a lot of time to just what it, Nah, man. It's, it turns out uh, I am more structured than I I knew, and like I was just following the schedule 
that I that I instinctively created instead of wrote down. Right. And when I wasn't able to do those things, then the light was showing on it. Like, oh, right. I, I am going crazy right now. <laughs> well, that, that's the big part about it is you get that internal clock after a while. And when you you've trained your body for that internal clock, then all of a sudden you don't have to rely on that internal clock. It does make you feel like you're a little bit crazy for a while. Mm hmm. Yeah, it is. a. Uh... It is a weird time to be around. I mean, <laughs> think about it. I mean, in, in, in history, how many times has like an entire nation been shut down? Well, in the past 200 years, at least twice. Don't say. <laughs> but I mean, it's, it's not something that's a commonplace thing where, you know, people yeah. don't go to work. People don't leave their homes except for the basic essentials. It's, it's you know, like I said, it, it's one of those things that, is not a commonplace activity. So we, we, we almost have to relearn how you do things. And that's going to be the fun part is when things do finally get back to normal, how many people are going to be able to adjust back into what normality used to be? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know it's going to be different for me. Um, I, I have definitely taken this on as trauma. And so I already got PTSD from being a bouncer and living in bad neighborhoods and all that stuff. Uh, and so I know what it looks like when it's starting to set in. So I'm real thankful. One shout out to my therapist. And, uh, <laughs> and you know, like, it makes me, for sure, it makes me appreciate everything more. Um, I went out a few times, like you said, it's our anniversary this week. So I, uh, I went and I had to go get her, her the gifts that I got for her. And uh, and we saw some friends over the, the weekend. They have like a big enough yard that we just sat 10, yeah. 20 feet from each other. Um, and I was I was like a puppy who just got his belly rub for the first time. <laughs> well, actually, I think I'd seen a picture you had posted on Instagram or something. Mm -hmm. uh, it was actually really cool where I guess it was when your neighbor you're sitting like on the little balcony part of your or right little front porch where your stairs are there. Sitting up there, and you had two neighbors down there on the sidewalk mm -hmm. in their lawn chairs, and just y'all were sitting there talking. And I let you know, I, I, I almost miss that. I, I guess it's the other human contact that 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 I miss so much. Yeah, like I've always been. I mean, me and my family, you know, we're we're not fist bumpers. We're huggers. We see you. We've known you. We've seen you in a while. You're getting a big ass hug. Yeah, you, you can't do that anymore right now. Nah, I think uh, so for sure. I'm primarily a hugger, but again, because of, you know, working in clubs and living in bad neighborhoods, I definitely have that guard up. Like I can, I assess like uh, a stranger really quickly. Like, is this going to be a handshake or a hug? This is the handshake. And <laughs> I just, you know, knock that down. This is going to be a handshake or an elbow or a hello. This is going to be a hello. <laughs> That's an air high five. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. If that. I still have flashbacks. I was at a convention in Atlanta and there's a guy who I, I'd known for a good little bit, seen him at a bunch of shows and he goes, Theo, hey! And as I'm walking up, we're both walking towards each other. He stops and yeah. Oh! And I froze. Hey. <laughs> I froze because my hand was already kind of out. He just oh, grabbed it. Oh. Yeah, he just grabbed it. I was sick in minutes. <laughs> I was sick in minutes. He just he just passed me con crud. Oh. <laughs> See, I love people to understand that. That's some real stuff. That's really real. If you've that's never really if, yeah, dude, that's it. if you're going, if you go to a show, you are sooner or later you are gonna get con crud, and it is like that's the worst part. It's like the nastiest thing. It's not one thing in particular. Yeah, it's, it's not a script. Like, it's like a mixture of like eight different diseases and bacterias and and smells and, and oh the smells. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. The concrete yeah. smells leave a lot to be lot to be desired. Um basically <laughs> it goes to show that that you know there are people that do need to take more than one shower a day or even a week. Um, you know, deodorant is a thing. Uh, you, know. I, you know what? Like, yes, I get that. I've also been a nerd in art school, and like, I get it. I get this. It's just not going to happen with everybody. 
but like oh, no. keep your keep your sickness to yourself. Like that's the biggest thing. I don't know the the odor thing. I mean, no, like it's uh, big. Uh, well, well, it's when you when you have people that that, and you know what? Hey, if it works for you, it works for you. Nothing against it, but I don't see how rubbing crystals on your freaking underarms is going to stop that stank coming from it. I tried it. You have to do a whole lot more. You have to do a whole lot more. Um, I don't know exactly how the crystals work, but <laughs> I I am I was raised hippie. <laughs> My mom was into all of that stuff, and I definitely have more than one Thai crystal this deodorant, and I found, like, I have to shave my armpits and have a very non-active day for that to be anywhere near effective. Yeah, you could do the same same freaking thing if you had a very non-active day and shaved your armpits and washed those nasty things, you know. You don't need anything. You don't need regular deodorant. It's true. It's true. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, you're basically not wearing any deodorant. So <laughs> I've only found, so I do, I am aware of like uh, the aluminum and deodorant and like Lynx yeah. Alzheimer's and all that stuff. And so I have been trying to find alternatives, but I'm also a big ass dude and I'm a, and I'm an active dude. And so like- yeah. In an I, area I'm, where it's humid as hell. Woo, ooh, yeah. Like I was, I was wearing Arm and Hammer, you know that twenty four hour stuff, yeah. and still having a shower twice a day. Well, that's what I'm saying. You, 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 you're living in an area where you, you walk to go pick up your garbage can off the corner of the road. You come back, and you have to change shirts. Mm -hmm. But I did find some CBD deodorant that doesn't have aluminum that actually works for a full day. So actually, you know, they actually sell some. We have a we have a, a vape shop next door that does a lot of CBD stuff, and mm -hmm. he got some CBD. Uh, 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 deodorant and I was actually surprised that I'm still kind of nervous about it like my mm -hmm. job I, I, I'm still afraid to do it because if you read up on I've done a lot of research and a lot more recently but you know it's still just like with non-alcoholic beer it still has trace amounts of THC in it unless so apparently there's two different ways to extract the CBD from it mm -hmm. um, if supposedly I, I haven't brave enough to try it yet but supposedly if it's been if it comes from Raw hemp has been cold pressed and pulled out with CO2. It's supposed to eliminate any THC whatsoever in the liquid. I would do some research on that because if it's if that's accurate, um, CBD is great, man. See, like I so I first used it functionally when I was training in New York, and you know I put it in my my smoothie or whatever. Uh, because like the juice shop downstairs from the gym gave us a big discount. So we ate there a lot and they had CBD and they would just, you know, do that yeah. for you. And training, just like the stress, like everything was so much better. So much better. See, I'm gonna, I'll give it to my dogs. Uh, I bought some of the CBD dog treats. Um, I have one dog that's, that's a hyper freaking psychopath. Mm -hmm. And then I have one, but the older one, he's, you know, he's got joint pains and, you know, he's getting older and everything else. I give each one of them one a night. Uh, Wigan, the, the older one, he he sleeps like a baby now, whereas normally he's up and down all night. And then mm -hmm. Jammer, the psychopath, he doesn't sleep all night, but he's not running around like trying to catch ghosts at, at two o'clock in the morning anymore either. So uh, I've seen the effects on it, but hey, I'm just scared. I would be that one person who I started using it and you know, I would go take a, have to take a drug test for work. I would be that one person that ended up coming and got positive on the drug test. Do you know, well, I guess there's a zero tolerance still, right? Yeah. Like and, there's, there is no appeals process. Mm -hmm. Like this is what I was using or whatever. Right. But, yeah. it, but the thing is, is it, um, like I said, I already have a very, very low tolerance to, to medications and, and drugs and stuff anyway. Like I can't take like when I burn my hand, so I could not take pain pills because I'm allergic to any opiate based type thing. So uh, I like I said, I, with my luck, I would try something. It would have like a small trace, tiny little amount of THC, like point zero 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 seven two percent. And that would be just enough to make me come up hot on it. But like I said, after doing the research, there is a certain kind. You, you have to make sure from certain companies that says uh, CO2 extracted and cold mm -hmm. pressed and from 100% hemp. And the CBD that comes from that supposedly is guaranteed THC free. 
But like you're saying, I mean, you only got three years left, so I, yep. I wouldn't. I, yep. Unfortunately, I wouldn't risk it. I'm not going to. I mean, I would love to. You know, I had issues with my back and all kinds of other stuff. I wouldn't mind taking it and help. I mean, get a decent night's sleep. I'd love that. Uh -oh. uh -oh. Something went down wrong. I can still hear you. I can't see you, though. I goofed up. There you are. <laughs> there you go. But I'm, I'm still very interested in the CBD aspect because, you know, it's it's got to have for, for so many people to be using it and for it to be having these these great effects on people. I'd, I'd like to be able to try it. But like I said, unfortunately, I just right now I can't risk it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I can't wait till it's just legal. You know, well, I'm federally legal. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, know? I mean, you look at I mean, I hate it's pretty funny. It's, it's illegal here in Mississippi. But yet, Ole Miss has what one of the largest marijuana grows for medicinal marijuana in the entire. That is bad weed. <laughs> <laughs> I, when she told me about that, I looked it up, and the next article was, "But it's terrible." We, like, because they're, they're supposed to say like what they're they're trying to tell the effects of our right, uh, right. of our human body, that kind of stuff. But they're yeah. not using weed that anybody would actually smoke. Yeah, they're not, they're not growing it for for uh, for. Pleasurable purposes, <laughs> which is a shame. <laughs> well, I was watching a thing. I think about I watch Vice every once in a while. I was watching a mm. thing where they're making some of the stuff where you know they can make it taste like pineapple and and everything else. And then they pull out this one big old bud, and it was it was like it wasn't green, it wasn't brown, it wasn't yellow. It was purple and red. Yep. I'm like, look at that. Is that crap. fruity pebbles? Yeah, I think it was something called fruity pebbles. Yeah. I was like, look at that crap. <laughs> I was walking my dog about 10 years ago and it just got the dog. Still, I don't know jack shit about training dogs. I'm just trying to figure this dog out. And he's pulling his one direction. Finally, I'm like, fine, what is it? I get over there. It's a bag of weed. And <laughs> it was gold. Gold? Gold. Damn. It was one wonderful. <laughs> well, I remember a lot, this. I can't remember. This didn't happen maybe a few years ago. I guess here, I guess somehow or another, a bunch of uh, bale bricks come washing up on shore. Uh, the only thing I think is they had done a bust or tried to do a bust out in the out in the ocean, and yeah. they started throwing stuff overboard to do it. So, and then finally, from the currents, everything, a lot of it started making its way onto the beach. So you would walk down the beach, and there'd be like. A brick wait, here. wait, wait. Hold on. Your beach? Yeah, Mississippi Beach. Whoa. So then they, they came out here and they ended up uh, getting it all together and everything else. Well, then they forgot to check the islands. So people were going out to the islands and finding bricks everywhere out there. Oh, my God. Could you imagine? Oh, <laughs> That's like forever's worth for the average person. <laughs> You know, I once held a quarter pound in my hand. You know, somebody was like, here, you want to, you know, see what, it, you know, and it was a pillow. It was a whole, like, I, I wouldn't know what to do with that. That's too, and think about the, a, a brick that's thrown from a, a ship in the ocean that's getting busted by the Coast Guard. Oh, yeah. That's like, that's like a bale of hay. <laughs> it's a literal bale of hay. That's Dude, it. I'm telling you, it was crazy. But yeah, people were going. I mean, I had never seen so many people on the beach in my life. God, I've like, ever seen them. I was like, what the hell is going on? Sure enough, that's what we found out a couple days later. That was going on. Yeah, just show up to the bonfire after it's done. Dude, was it, <laughs> so, it was funny. Every once in a while when they do the raids here, like, uh, remember they, they found out there was a semi coming through that was full of it. Well, they ended up having this big, huge x-ray machine type thing. It was on the back of another semi, and it basically came over. And it was like a like this shape. It would come over off to the side. It would run down the side of the tractor trailer, and they could tell what was inside of stuff. And um, they ended up catching it. was like a, I guess a monster monster amount. But um, they used one of our, our one of our fire prevention trailers to to store it and carry it because they had nothing. It was so much they had nothing to carry it in, and. Uh, then they had to. They went and took it and, and burned it, destroyed it. Well, inside this trailer, like I said, it's just an old enclosed trailer. You know, 
where there's plywood floors, plywood walls. There's cracks in every single thing. We get in there to use it with some of our recruit class. Like, let's go in here. We got to clean it out. We open it up. As soon as you open it up, it, it about bowled you over to smell. Then we get in there and start sweeping. We ended up with a freaking dustpan about this full, just of stuff that, they, that was left behind. Oh, my God. Of course, I, I don't think anybody would ever want it because it was mixed, mixed with dirt and twigs. Yeah, yeah, it's in a dustpan, but still, that's a so lot. It was still, it was still a dustpan full, you know, a like normal-sized dustpan, completely full. Yeah, if anything touches a dustpan, it's dead to me. <laughs> dustpan, behind the toilet, any of that stuff. Oh. Dead. Well, you got you to gotta get back there and clean it good. You... <laughs> I could clean it. Could, I, I've been in places that were like sterile, like clean, like constantly clean a staff of people just for cleaning. Nope. Don't matter. Yeah. We touch the dustpan behind the toilet. Dead. <laughs> dead. I don't ever need to see it again. Let it, let it be. Yep. Yep. I don't, <laughs> you can go ahead and do whatever you want with it. Yeah. I don't know. That's like, uh, and, and, like I've had cats before. My daughter's got cats, but people who don't change their litter box, mm. oh, you can smell it when it goes in. We we go we go to places where you can tell that that litter box ain't been changed since Dixon was in office, and it was it, it'll bowl you over that that ammonia nasty smell. Oh my god! Well, you got to treat litter boxes differently anyway. That's not regular trash. No, dude, I'll tell you, that's just that's that's hazardous waste. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you got to, like, if I were to get another cat, uh, I haven't had a cat in years, but if I were, I would get the one that automatically cleans itself and then get the mat that you put in front of it and put it in the farthest corner of my house. Like, I already know. You, you I, it, well, There's nothing you can do. One of the best things to use was not all the cat litter. They, they make some out of pine, pine shade. Mm. Huh. It's, it's a little pellets. It's formed in the pellets, but then it, but it absorbs the, the stuff. And it, but you always got that pine smell, which is actually kind of strong in itself. But you got that over anything else. And plus it clumped and got rid of it easy. So, yeah, that was really good. Man, that's worth looking into. Of course, we ain't I'd much rather smell pine. <laughs> pine than piss? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. All right, dude. Well, it's uh, good catching up with you. We're, we, we're running right at an hour now. I didn't realize it was that yeah. long. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, good catching up with you. And anybody would listen in, y'all tune in. Uh, James wasn't able to make it. We'll have to reschedule. We yeah. got a few other good people coming in. Uh, I don't know if you'll tell them what we schedule it, but we got a, a friend of, of Theo's coming in who's a horror artist and done a lot of stuff with different musicians and things. And mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Brian uh, Stewart. Then we also have one coming up too that that I am very very proud of. He's the drummer of one of my eighty favorite '80s bands of all time, uh, and so we'll have him coming in. And of course, like we get James in, and and we'll be having Ming back here just to kind of come play around for a while. And, and Stephanie, we can't we can't do much without her showing yeah. up, and hopefully he won't get us kicked off the thing. Uh, <laughs> so all right, everybody, good to see you again. We'll see you soon. All right. All right, we're off.